Hello everyone, Pockets here, back again playing some more EVE Online. We are once again looking at soloing emerging conduits. Uh, lots of great discussion and movement since my last video, so I wanted to come in and do like an, do an update. Show a new fit that I'm going to rabbit ears we have been working on. Primarily this is Ashtarothi's fit that he shared with me, and there's some tweaks that I've made. But we're going to take a look at this and see how it compares to our previous fit. So... Let's get started. So this here is the original fit. This is the fit I flew pretty much in the first video. Um, so we're looking at here, just say 600 million. Um, probably a little less if you did it with through buy orders and stuff. Feliz Heavy and Tropic Disintegrator, three Salvager 2s, a Republic Fleet Large Cat Battery. Now I have an Abyssal Battery in this spot that was uh, mutated from a Republic Fleet large cap battery. So I'm leaving that out for, the, I left this out for the saved fit that I share with people because that's personal. It's harder to get that to be universal. And three cap char recharger twos, damage control two, one Imperial Navy energized adaptive nanomembrane. Now remember, this could be a T2 in this fit. I had an Imperial Navy one laying around, so I used it. And then a T2. Um, if you can do two Imperials, you'll get better resists overall, but you can do T2, two T2 here and have a similar effect. Reactive armor hardener and three times medium armor wrappers, uh, wrapper twos. I threw in a Centum C type myself because again, it's something I had laying around. And then in the rigs, medium auxiliary nano pump two, medium capacitor control circuit two. Now, people have asked about this, uh, being that this is a buffer in an obviously active fit. Uh, what this allowed me to do, it brought up my base armor pool which did seem to help a little bit. I had another, and it also fit, that's the big thing. If we had more cap room, we could have switched this for a T1 and put two of these in, which you'll see in a minute. But because it fits and none of these, even a T1 of this doesn't fit in this spot, it just gave us a little extra buffer to buy time while we take some of the DPS out in the last wave. So that's why that's that way. And then for ammo, mostly we use the te Tetrion et Exotic Plasma. This is the short range high DPS. And I'm the mass on only when there was some range issues, but because now I warped to within, you know, within range of the spawn point, as you'll see in this video, I only ever use the Tetron really. And yes, yeah, so that's the fit. And then for drones, mostly we're using Valkyries. Oops, wrong button. Uh, using the Valkyries. So let's actually switch to those so they get an accurate number. Uh, just because they're the right damage type and they track a little better than Hammerheads. If my, my memory serves, but they're doing the right damage type is the big one. They're weak against uh, explosive first and then thermal, so hammerheads are fine because it's the secondary weakness. But I was using Valkyries. We can actually do compare them if we wanted to, but they're a little faster is the point. And so that gave us these numbers. Now, this number keeps changing every time I look. Oh, that's because that, right. So let's take this. That's 148.9 hit points per second. Again, if you're going to use a thing like Pypha, it'll tell you what this actual number is based on your resists as well. Uh, the resists will change as we go with the reactive armor hardener anyways. So I'm just looking at the base numbers because that's what most people are going to use. But if I had... One day I'll reinstall Pypha and we can look at the actual proper numbers. But yeah, 148.9 and our DPS is 312.9. That's with the high damage uh, ammo and Valkyries. And what's the other important number here? So resists are 82, 76, 72, 71. And our base armor buffer effective hit points is 62,000, almost 62,000. And that's tracking is 55.13. And this is the fit that I used. It's 577 million. So let's say 600 million. Uh, that'll cover the cost of maybe getting an Abyssal mod to try to roll a better battery. Uh, it'll be a little less if you dropped these down. But so 550 to 600 million. Okay, so Astrothy came up with a fit. It's a more expensive fit, but it's uh, we'll see if it's a little faster, a little more efficient. So with this fit, I went back and I looked at my, my payouts and did some timing. And from payout to payout, if I'm just running the sites, taking no gaps outside of finishing salvaging, because that's one key is I want to complete salvage and loot. Uh, so from payout to payout, running multiple sites, it's about 15 minutes. Uh, some waves are a minute or two minutes slower, some are a minute or two faster. So 15 is the average for this fit as it was. So now we're just going to go the other way where it's not quote unquote as cheap as we can get. 
and we're going to go with Mark II. Let's look at the no implants first, hang on, because that's, that's kind of a spoiler alert, you know. So this is a fit, the raw fit, so we can compare just the ship itself. Uh, so our DPS goes up by about 70, maybe a little less than 70, uh, almost exactly 70 actually, 69.9 or something. Uh, so our DPS does go up again, that's using, oops, we switched this to Valkyrie, so we're comparing apples to apples. Okay, so not quite the biggest change. We might switch to Hammerheads for the extra DPS, that might actually be something to think about. But otherwise we're using the same weapon, it is having a Tropic Disintegrator with Tetrion Exotic Plasma, three Salvager 2s. Now we start seeing some changes, obviously the price, but we have one Republic Fleet Large Capacitor Battery, I'm going to continue using my Abyssal mod just because it's slightly better. Uh, one Thucker large cap battery, so the difference is this gives more cap, and this gives more resistance to, if I remember correctly, slightly more resistant to electronic warfare, so s you can see here we get capacitor bonus, actually let's just do this, I can do this, you hold shift and you can get two windows and you can actually straight compare. So you get slightly more actual cap, and you get slightly more actual resistance, so putting the two in gives us some good newt resistance. And one Imperial Navy cap booster. Now we're blinging out because we're trying to make room for this. So we have a Federation Navy web out to 14 kilometers, 60% velocity reduction. So this is going to allow our our unit, which has the same tracking, because we haven't done anything about tracking, but it's going to allow this to track targets better. So we get better hits. We do more damage per cycle is the idea. And using the Federation Navy one gives us the extra range to reach out and grab things. Uh, like a T2 isn't quite as good. If we compare it, uh, we can do it this way. Show info, compare up here, I think. And we're gonna go to variants, compare it just to a straight T2, and we can see things in this window. This is something that's really good to do. I get a lot of questions, so I'm gonna be fairly thorough as much as I can. I'm probably gonna miss stuff, because that's what I do. So you can see, you get the same reduction, but you only get you get four kilometers less range, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but if they're outside that, you're not getting the reduction, you're not doing as much damage. Uh, the cruiser does tend to fly just outside this 14 kilometers, but everything else is between six and 11 usually, so it's nice to have that. You could probably get away with a tech two, but if we're gonna go all in, we might as well go all in. I did cut some shortcuts, but that wasn't a place where I did. The other thing it does do, I think, if we look, we use less capacitor, which is nice, because we need to keep our capacitor. Actually, follow-up won't be a thing. Uh, fitting. So it's a little harder to... Where's the fitting right here? It's a little less CPU, which I don't think we're even close on, so that won't be an issue. What am I doing? Close that. Yeah. So that's not an issue. So basically, it's just about the extra range and the capacitor activation cost. So that's a nice little toy here. Again, this is like the bling fit for the most part, so going the other way. Reactive Armor Hardener 2, or Reactive Armor Hardener, same as the last one, Damage Control 2. Here we freed up a slot by dropping one of the Reppers, which saved on the capacitor, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Tropic Radiation Sink 2, to give us a little higher DPS, that's where some of this came from. And that'll also help us ramp, like as we ramp up, we're gonna get more and more. Uh, two Imperial Navy Adaptive Energizer Nano Membranes, Energized Adaptive Mana Membranes, I can read words. Uh, it's the extra 2% here. And then two C-type, Centum C-type armor repairs. Now, Ashtrothi had a different one in here, but since I already had one Centum, I just bought a second one. I think they're about the same price and give a little more, whatever it is. Anyways, this is what I fit. Ash had a different repair here, but since I already had one, I just doubled it up. And then the rigs, so we switched down to a T1 or a Tech 1 capacitor control circuit, because we don't, because the second repair we don't need quite as much. And then two auxiliary nano pumps, which increases the cycle rate of our uh, repers here, so we can get some extra rep. Now you see we're very close. As the fit as it is, we're slightly down on the reps uh, by 15 points in this fit per second. So that's a pretty big drop, and we'll solve that in a second. But DPS is up, our EHP is down as well. So we definitely, since we're accommodating for almost 6,000 extra hit points lost, we're going to need to make that up in our repping power but ranges and tracking is the same, and our resistances are pretty close. We're the same here, one point up, one point up, one point up. So we're about 1% up, but 1% is a big difference, right? 1% of 1,000 damage is 10. I mean, it does add up. 
So if we can add that to our repping, that makes our repers more efficient. So it's a thing. And that's the fit. Now, this fit is intended to fly with, let me leave the ship here, with implants. So we're going to leave the ship. Now, I compared them with the current implant set on. This is my Macarial set. This is what I was flying in the last video with the previous fit. So the only thing that really affected us was motion prediction and surgical strike. Now, obviously, large projectile turrets doesn't happen and just some navigation stuff because again this is my material it's all about warp speed and getting on and off grid real quick but motion prediction surgical strike did help but we have a special implant for this ship which we are now going to jump into we'll take a look at the numbers after that so you can see here it's the asclapian or asclaps set one through five uh, mid grades for me i'm not didn't have the money to do high grades i don't think it's necessary so what do these do well we get a 3% bonus to perception, which means we train faster, which is nice. We also get a 1% bonus to armor repper amount. And then for the set, you get a 10% bonus to the strength of all ass clap uh, bonuses. So this 1%, we get actually get an extra 10%. So when you add them all up and you add your set bonuses. So if we go, that's the alpha, the beta does uh, the memory, but it's plus two to armor repair amount. So for every cycle, we're doing now 3%. 3.3% more and in fact this is another 10% bonus so it just all stacks up there's some math here but everyone that gives us the bonus it's quite crazy uh, so willpower plus 3% plus 10% so we're now at 6 plus 30 it stacks weird so it's not exactly the same I've never really sat down and figured that out intelligence in 4 so as you kind of go up you can see we're getting more and more and more uh, charisma in 5 and 10 now there is for set six, there is an Omega. Uh, if we, I wonder if we can, let's try this. Let's go ask Lapian. Now the Omegas are cool. So we're gonna go mid grade just because that's kind of where we're at. Mid grade Omega, so this is slot six. 25% bonus to all secondary effects. But I decided not to go this way. I didn't do the math, I'm just, this one was about three and a half to 400 million, I think, when I went to buy it. Whereas the sixth, I did an inherent implant noble repair systems, uh, six, so slot six, level four. This was like 26 million or something. It was, it was a third of the cost at least. It was like 100 million for this one. And it gives a 4% reduction in repair system duration. So we're gonna cycle 4% faster basically. So whether that works out more or less in the past i'd have to get in pypha and actually swap them but i don't have pypha installed and you can't simulate implants in the in-game that i'm aware of so i just switched out for this just to save some cost because it was three times as much and it would have added 300 million to the cost of the ship or some such gunsling and motion prediction tick three so this is a three percent bonus to tracking which is going to help us hit and again apply that damage better we have this Eros Stasis Web of Fire. This is a relatively new one, if I remember correctly. Gives us a 3% bonus to the maximum range of Stasis Web of Fires. And then a Noble uh, Repair Proficiency. Or, yeah, And this gives us another th repair system amount, 3%. So we're trying to make up for some of that loss in dropping the third wrapper with implants. And then adding some motion prediction. Uh, slot 10, I haven't figured out what I want to put in here yet. I don't know. We will figure that out. I just figured, let's move on. So there wasn't really much that's going to help us with armor and stuff in that slot. So anyway, with the implants, so 900 million just with the ship, which may be able to run it just as it is, but it would be tight. And for that cost, you might as well go with the triple rep fit and be a little more comfortable, is my opinion. But we go to Mark II with implants. Can we do that? <laughs> 1.5 billion-esque, give or take. Now, I didn't pay that much because I had a lot of this stuff already, but... This is the fit. I will share it this way because it's got all the implants included and the two ammo types we need to carry. I have nanite repair paste in here as well again so that if we, um, words, overheat, we can repair it. So that's nice. But you can see our stats now. Let's get the, we're going to just go back to comparing this because that's the drones we compared with. Let's get our ammo up here. So 341 DPS, so it's a pretty decent increase. Tracking speed is slightly better. We get out to 14 kilometers. It's actually going to be a, another 3%. I don't know. It's So it's uh, like 14.3. It doesn't really matter. I guess maybe we could just drop that 
maybe don't use that implant if you don't think it's worth it. But this lets us, if they're at 14, we have more of a chance of them being within that percentage. Anyways, I digress. I grabbed it. It's there. It may be something that I'm missing that'll extend this to 16, which would be nice, because then we can grab the cruiser, but that's okay. Uh, cap stable at 4% with this setup. So this is it. We're going to undock, and we are going to try this. I'm just going to double check that I've actually got everything. And see if we can... We're going to try to run three sites. Hopefully we can get them uncontested and we're not fighting for them, because I would like clean test results. Uh, that didn't happen in my initial testing, so I can't really speak to the numbers. I know Ash was getting 12 minutes, I think he said, between payouts, so it's three minutes faster, three to four minutes faster, which adds up over the course of a day. Uh, whether it's, you know, three times the cost faster or not, I guess is each individual person's choice. But let's just make sure I am in the right implant set. Yep, okay. Skills are still training, cool. And okay, I will bring you back once we're warping to a site. Just check my, make sure I've got all my ammo. So yeah, the Masonic, I don't need that much. We got everything I need. I'm going to drop this stuff off because that was from my testing. We're just going to throw this into in item hanger for now and I'll sort it later. All right. And I'll be back once I find something. All right, here we are. It's a little quiet. There may be someone here, but we're going to work to this site and see what we can do. We'll turn on our reactive now. It doesn't matter. We're kept stable, so we're just going to leave it on. Normally, I'd wait till I get closer to hitting armor, but in this case, we're just going to do this for simplicity, simplicity's sakes. And I'm going to try and talk through what I'm doing. One of the things I try to do is I do a warp in that sets me on top of the portal that they spawn in so that I don't have to wait for them to close the range. Uh, that's why I don't have to switch ammo, which I'm pretty sure I'm on the right one. I am not. There we go. I don't know why that was switched out. That's weird. Okay. Oh, it's already spawned. Is there somebody in here? No. Okay, pre-spawned. So, we are still going to try. But this one won't be a good... Mm, okay. No, we're just going to do it at this range, I guess. So it won't be a perfect example. That's okay. And we want to get the starving first. Let's do hammerheads. See how they fare. They do slightly more base DPS. And we're going to cycle these at 50-50. So once that one reaches about half, we turn on the other one. And that gives us a sort of smooth. And we've got that. I do bookmark this. Oops, I didn't mean to target it. Definitely don't want to shoot that. All right. And now it's just the waiting game. Now, normally I try to warp in so that I don't have to wait for them to fly. I might do it between... And... No, we're just kind of stuck here. It'll be okay. It's going to add a little bit of time, I think. So once you kill the starving, just work your way from the top down. So Kikimoras do more DPS. And then I like to take out the Raznaborg Damovix first. And then Ghosting. But really, it doesn't matter. Just work your way down the sizes. Uh, I was playing around with things like getting rid of the Renewings as quick as possible. But there's nobody here, right? Okay, it was just spawned and is there a wreck? No, just the, just the Triglavian one that we killed. Weird. Someone warped in, decided they wanted none of it. So one of the tricks is I do try to salvage as we go to cut the time that we're wasting once the new site spawns. Once you kill the last spawn, 60 seconds after that, the next one will spawn up. So you want to kind of be ready to warp to the next one. Um, options if you don't want to just have a friend salvaging behind you, but no, oh, you know what I didn't do? I thought I did it, so this is going to be a terrible run, but it'll give us an idea. The other thing that's come up a few times is that I sit still, and I've been, you know, typically you don't want to be sitting still because moving, even against frigates, will reduce the incoming DPS. However, moving also affects your tracking, so if this was a missile ship, absolutely orbit your can or move around to reduce incoming damage, but because we also need to worry about our tracking... I find if I sit still, I just do more consistent damage. It's only their radial velocity orbiting me that comes into play with tracking. So yeah, well, I'm taking more damage. I'm going to, what I'm basically doing is trusting my tank to hold so I can apply as much consistent DPS as I can in the meantime. It's about waiting. What I mean is I'm hitting the buttons, but I'm hitting them too soon. And it's causing me not to uh, shoot my targets. Now, you don't have to be super efficient on the repping. As you can see, it really just happens as we go here. 
And yeah, this is going to be a little slower because we are going to have to wait for some distance to close. And we're going to want to recall our drones between waves this time. But once we apply it, you can see that they're dying a little bit faster. Like, we're hitting. Where's our hit? Right there, 288 already, which is much closer to our actual damage. I mean, not really. We should be doing almost 1,000. So there's 700 there, you can see, now that we've slowed them down. So that was probably just what was left. So it does make a huge difference. We're getting closer to our actual damage, but we're still overshooting. It might even be worth maybe switching out that low slot for a tracking computer or a tracking, whatever they're called, tracking enhancers, I think is the low slot one. But the extra damage is going to help against the frigate or the, the frigate, the cruiser. So here's the Zorias. We want to get the starving first, which we might be able to do. Do we wait till they get into 20? They're going to be here quick. We'll just wait. They shouldn't take long. We're going to call our drones, though. So this is the time. Right now, normally I would be over here and they'd be within range just as soon as they land. We don't want to bother targeting that because we got to keep our stuff. Uh, and this guy's in range, but I don't care so much. I want this one. Okay. We'll get the starving first, and then I just kind of order these. Uh, the Rasnaborgs do more DPS typically, so this is kind of the order I'm just going to go with. We're not moving, so I don't care about the tangling at all, unless they start going after my um, drones, which once they're on me and I'm threatening them with my laser, they seem to just stick to me, so that's awesome. Now this is Azorius Kiki, so this might be the last wave, which means we came in on the second wave, but you can see how it works. And I guess that's the important part. So wait for those to decycle, then fire them up so I'm not missing it. And then we'll get these. And that's a wreck we can lock. So yeah, I think keep the extra damage might help against the cruiser, bring the cruiser down. This is already his Vedmac a lot quicker. We have a red guy here. This guy's a, a ganker, so we'll have to see. Or at least he's affiliated with them. He may not gank himself, but he is in a corp that has done so. <laughs> that's why he's red. For the most part, that's who we have red. Just so we're aware of them. All right. And then grab that guy. So you can see the speed drop right over here. And as he comes down, he takes more and more damage. So we're bringing him down a fair piece, which is excellent. And we're just, even just using the screen, I'm just locking them as the MTU pulls them in, salvaging them up. You can see already if I drop no ammo, that's not amazing salvage, but this is the one that once we salvage the uh, Zoria's wreck, we'll get a pretty good chunk. And you know what? Fine. That's where my drones want to play. Whoops, I just turned off one of my reppers, but that's okay. I fat fingered the F3 key, so we'll just wait for it and just turn it back on. It's close enough. This point, and then a new wreck. Yeah, right there. Wait for those to cycle down. Turn them back on. Go web. So you can see we probably don't need the web range implant because we don't reach far enough to hit the cruiser because he hovers at about 16. But it is what it is. We spent it now. It's in there. Unless I can find something better for that slot. We probably don't even need both reps, but keep them on in case. Let's kind of do this. Okay, and we'll see if we get another wave here. We'll just uh, put one of our reppers on this other one. We don't need all three of them, although it's probably going to... Oh, there was another wave. Okay, perfect. Two starvings in this one. This is the wave that's a little bit more rough, so we're actually not going to bother targeting another one of those. Bring our drones in. We can salvage this one. Ooh, come on. Can we... Start targeting these next, and then these, and then this, but it won't matter. Come on in. And we want these first. We're just going to bring these over here. Starvings have to go first. They just kind of have to. This one's going to be first. So we're going to target. We're going to start shooting him at 20. And then webbing him at under 14. And then hammerheads once they're on us. Okay. So you can see we're repping is okay. I'm glad we had another wave. That's good. That is a good thing. And we'll wait to salvage until we've killed some stuff. That way we have them already targeted up. We need this guy down first. Because what we don't want is getting capped out. We shouldn't. I have been down to about 
30 percent we'll see what i get to here but we're gonna kill this guy pretty quick waiting for them to come in didn't actually cost that much it was seconds so you don't have to do the second warp if you don't want to uh, the one thing i like about the second warp is it makes it a little harder for people just to come in and steal your loot because they have to they can't just you're not just on where you landed okay you can see he's at 15 we don't think we can reach him with our web see so maybe going up to get one we'd have to go up a little bit though really let's start targeting these tanks holding just fine so we're doing all right and now we're going to start getting dps off the field so once this guy's gone these do hit pretty hard the numbers are scrolling really fast but if you pay attention you can see it so we have one more and then once we have extra room for targeting we'll start targeting rex again uh, if someone does land on grid I'll often scoop the loot out of my MTU in case they decide they want to shoot it. I can just scoop it up. So especially once the Zorius Vedmac is dead, that's the loot you want. But everything's holding just fine. I'm going to web this, pre-web this guy so we can slow him down before we start shooting. Probably, well, they're both Rasenborg, but this is probably the one we want to kill, but it shouldn't matter. So the tank is holding. And once the Vedmac's dead, he's kind of ramped up on us. That's why we're starting to see the tank uh, struggling a little more. But we'll be okay. Doo -doo -doo. So we'll lock up one more target. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So that's where our maximum right now is seven. So once we kill one of these, we can start doing wrecks. There we go. We'll get this guy webbed and shoot it at. Shoot it at? That's some good words right there. And these guys are all ramped up on us now. So we're kind of probably at peak DPS for them hitting us. But that's okay because it's holding. We never even got into trouble, which in my other fit, we would have probably gotten down to about here in this room and this wave so you can see that this does give us a lot more comfort for its price as i said most of the time in the third wave especially when it's the dual um dual starving room and you got to kill those two before you can start on the cruiser or you don't have to but recommended i usually get end up in around here before i get the dps off the field to start recovering which is why that buffer the trimark helps because without the trimark we probably would have died instead or had to warp off which is more likely. Uh, let's start targeting these guys up. Come on. All right. Web. Shoot. And that gives us another one we can target up. And we're just going to spread these out now. That Zorius is going to take a few cycles, probably, because they're a higher level wreck. I call them T2 Rex. I don't know if that's the proper term. I don't do a lot of salvaging, so I'm not up on all the vernacular but do we have another wreck yeah right there how many more do we have oh we have lots of wrecks okay you want to be shot good focus more on the shooting and less on the wrecks pockets don't be bad and so once we've cleared these off you'll see that we have about 60 seconds to finish clearing the room until the next one spawns uh, so this is the one we're in. Stack all. Okay. Uh, which one's running? Seven. So we'll get like that. Spread them around a bit. Target this one. Get everything moved over to this guy. Thank you. And there we have it. It's pretty simple. That'll be at least one more wreck then. That's a lootable wreck. That's good. Okay. Let's just do that. Okay. Scoopity scoop. All right. That's everything dead. There's the payout. So it's from that to the next payout. Now, we do have to wait 60 seconds. That gives us time to salvage everything, recall my drones, make sure all the loot wrecks are looted. Or looted. Okay. And then we're going to open this. Stack it. Um, don't care, don't care, don't care. Grab that stuff. Uh, everything's in, so we'll scoop this. Lock up the last wreck, yeah? Oh, that's the can. And let's just get this all off the field here. We don't need that. Come on. Don't make me a liar. This last wreck is Rasnaborgs as well. They're harder wrecks to salvage, so. 
Oops, I turned both of uh. Turn those back on. So a little less efficient. Okay, good. And that's it. Now we turn this stuff off to bring up our capacitor. Oh, could have left that on. Uh, looks like someone is running the other sites. Uh, we can kill this because we don't need it anymore. That's just in case I have to warp off or something happens and I forget it. And we're already ready for the next site. So 2021. Well, was our payout? Yeah, don't don't worry about my bills. Uh, 2020 and 18 is our payout. So we'll see from there what the next site payout is. Now that one was half started, but it looked like it was a full wave. So it's an okay judge of the timing. Because since we're going payout to payout, it's this one that matters anyway. And again, you saw it was fully salvaged, fully looted. I left some junk behind just to save room in my inventory. And already 18-ish, 19 million, cause none, except for this. 12 million, okay. So this is what we do, you zoom out, and it takes some practice, but you try to grab one of these back rocks. That one works. And then once you're landed, right click, right click, warp within 100, and it lands you in the center here. Because they're 160 away, we gotta land like here. So you'll see that we're gonna warp over there one day. This was a little quicker in my other one because I had the alignment speed and warp speed, but we can usually get over before the ships start coming out. And you'll see we're right on top of them now. And this again helps from people coming in and trying to steal wrecks because they have to slow boat over. Which means they're also at risk. And we have that. Save location. Turn this on. Save. And let's just start with our starving. There he is. And we'll pull this over. And that's the right order. Hammer heads out. Armor reppers on. Three and... Because we're starting with shields pretty much down. Can we go up through there, drones? Get that guy. All right. We're into it. And this is nice because now we don't have to wait for them to close the distance. So we're going to save that extra couple seconds. Start the web now. Just to start slowing them down. And then we'll start shooting. And we'll start getting wrecks targeted so we can loot them. We can go out to 6,500, I think. Or 6,000. So they're almost in range right from the start. Sometimes we gotta wait a second, but usually we have it locked up before the MTU is ready to really pull it in. And just try to keep track of everything. Now this is, goes a lot smoother as well when I'm not talking. Because when I'm trying to talk my way through it, it takes a lot of my uh, attention. So there's the wreck. We gotta be careful not to, I don't want to target my drones. I've done that. Start webbing, start shooting. And as long as we stay efficient, we've got this. We've got this. Okay, two, three, that should. What did I miss? I missed that one. Okay, we can start webbing and shooting and droning. There's a new wreck somewhere right here. Sort of watch where your drones are. That's where the wreck will be if you keep everything on the same target. Are we, we're not short of wreck? No, we're doing this correctly this time. All right. Oh, they're switching to my drones. That guy is. But he's going to die anyway in a second, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, can we start salvaging this? That'd be good. And then go get this guy. Yeah, you just keep up the pattern. Again, when I'm not talking, I can do it a lot more efficient because I can pay attention to what's going on a lot easier. But this will give us a good idea of just if it is that much faster. Again, whether it's worth the extra cost to you, that's up to each individual. So you can see they're right on us here, already into the fighting. And we're going to take out the starving first, buddies. Come on. We're just going to pull all that over. That's a good That's a good loadout. We'll, we'll live with that. Let's move these. And now we have our order. And let's get the rest of our salvagers on here. And this wreck locked up. Okay. Sweet deal. Everything's holding. As I didn't think it would be a problem. This fit should work. Oops, no. I'm not trying to salvage that guy. He's not dead yet. And yeah, so this is what I've been doing. I'm actually really enjoying it. Let's target up that wreck. Keep as on top of it as we can so we don't fall too far behind. In the other room, we probably don't need to lock up all seven targets. We can probably do four, leaving room for three wrecks, or do five and leaving room for even one wreck. Maybe two wrecks, so we always have one ready and on standby, but that's probably what I'll try because we can always add targets as we need to. 
but yeah it's going quite well so this fit does work better like honestly it is better I just don't know if it's a billion-esque better that I guess is as I said up to the individuals for me it is better because I know I'm gonna do a lot of these and the the pod will help with some other ships as well that I do fly but uh, we're just doing that and we should probably like actually kill this guy and all the wrecks yeah that's it we're doing well we're on top of it but yeah so this pod may come in use to some other ships I do intend to fly as well so it is worth it for me to have a, a billion-esque pod well it's 500 million-esque ish 600 million and just keeping an eye on everything there's another wreck here somewhere right there and a new wave coming soon uh, what's not shooting here that one could have saved that for the other wreck but that's okay spreading them out seems to be more efficient but when you're only getting one wreck at a time often these will be salvaged before I locked up the next wreck or very close to it yeah it's just like that and in this case since there will be one more I'm just gonna well we'll try it we could psych circ we could cycle these so that they don't all end at once but that's more micromanagey than I want to be two starvings again so we'll let those lock up and then we'll lock up these two we'll get this guy dead and then check our wrecks lock up that wreck so once again with the two starvings so we'll try to leave room for two wrecks I guess I don't know if it'll be an issue this guy takes a little while to kill out but yeah I'm enjoying doing this I know doing them in teams is fun too so you don't have to be quite you can spread some of the damage around you get a lot more DPS with two or three of these guys if you do two or three of these Damavix, I don't think there'll be any issues. Uh, no, no, take out this guy, please. And lock up the next wreck. Where's the next wreck? There it is. They almost, they almost got that Kiki on their own, to be honest. But we do want these Starvings down before we lose cap. Which, unfortunately, does give these ships time to ramp up, as I said. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Since it's really just one wreck. Nope, over here. Probably could have taken out the Kiki, but we need that Vedmac dead before he really gets a chance to ramp up. We will pre-slow down this Rasnaborg Kiki Moro, though. And there's another wreck. Five. Let's target another one of these. Alright, sweet deal. Definitely appears that it's going faster. Feels better, anyway. <laughs> open this as well in case we have to make a grab stack all so those are definitely coming we still okay over here yeah these we don't need just leave those behind so my indie guys can yell at me some more all right almost there so now we can grab this Kiki, who's already pre-webbed, so he's already going sub-100, so we should apply some pretty decent damage right from the get-go. Uh, let's see here, blue numbers. 400. Yeah, so we do about half-ish, a little more, a little less than half, somewhere around the 50%. Everything's holding. We have a wreck. Let's not forget to do that, because that's important to keep up on that. We'll try to get this guy down. Yeah. The web certainly makes a difference. It'd be nice to get maybe a double web. Or, like I said, could probably swap out the one low slot, the damage mod for a tracking mod, but I don't know if that's necessary. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's take this guy. Let's grab the first one that was handy. He was already damaged, so I went for him. We have all the wrecks locked. We don't. Uh, we're going to spread these out. I'll give them one cycle, and then I'm going to put the other ones... This one's actually going to be the harder wreck, I think. Oh, okay. Do we have any more wrecks? We do. We do now. We'll put two on here, and we'll keep one. Take this guy out, just because that's where my drones were already, so I don't have to move my drones, so it speeds that up. Okay. 
Yeah, that's working. This time I got to call my drones where they go, so I'm going to take out the renewing now. Everything's locked. And this was the final room, so this will give us our baseline. And everything just holds, just like that. It's a wonderful thing, really. I meant to stagger them. Stagger this one. Because there's no other wrecks to do. By the time we get this locked, we should be... Where are they? They're under the text where you can't see it. Let's get this guy webbed and shooting. So what are we at? Nine minutes? Ten minutes? Twelve minutes? Yeah. So it is about three minutes faster from payout to payout. The salvaging doesn't matter because we had it done with time to waste. So as you saw, we sat there and waited for the spawn. So the salvaging has no effect. So from payout to payout is just about 12 minutes almost exactly. And that was a pretty efficient site. I didn't waste too, too, too much time. So there we go, 12 minutes. So we shaved about three minutes off our clear. Now, if you're running these all day, that will add up, considering how valuable some of the stuff can be in these. Uh, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Nope, none of this is worth a crap. So scoop to cargo hold. Let's uh, salvage this last wreck. And kill our bookmark. The drones are in. And still no sight. So there we go. 15 minutes. I think that's a good indicator that this is a more efficient fit if you think it's worth the extra cost. And that's where it is. Now, since I've already built this, obviously I'm going to use it. It was the same hull and everything, so I do have everything. The only thing that changed was the rigs, but that's fine. I'm going to use this fix. I already bought it. But there you go. So it's up for you, for you to decide if that's worth the cost. I'm sure you could find something in between, but shaving off... I mean spending a whole bunch of money from the other fit to save time. I don't know if it's necessary. That's up to each person to decide. There is a spawn there. So you see we had a few seconds of wasted. I am not going to run that one. I'm going to end that here. I will let my people know that this is a nice quiet site and get them in here. I have to do some more work. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video and see that, okay, yes, we can find a more efficient fit. There is a cost to that. We can try it without the implants and see how it runs, though you are lowering your repping power, so you might fall back more into that dangerous zone where it's a little scarier, you may have to warp off every so often. So it all comes down to personal choice. I personally, as an average player, would fly the 500 mil fit for a while until it's paid for itself at least, and then maybe switching up if it's something I intend to do a lot of. But if you're doing them all day long and you have the disposable income, this will definitely save you some time. You know, every every five sites is a free site. So every, every sixth site is a bonus. So if you're doing 12 a day, which is not hard, you know, it may be worth it for you. So yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys think. I'm rambling on. I don't want to tell you what to do. But that is my opinion. If I was an average player, I would use the cheaper fit. But because I like blingy and I like efficiency and I do these a lot, this works for me. Well, some of my guys... But let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. If you have any other fits, maybe some cheaper alpha-friendly stuff that's not a Praxis. I haven't had much luck with the Praxis. Even the fits, they just take too, too long. And the alphas are just better at teaming up even together or with an Omega. I just think it's... Uh, and that's a good thing. Alphas should be. That's kind of the point. Make friends. So if you do want people to fly these with and you don't have any friends, come check out my our Discord. Link is in the comments and you see to the bottom there. Uh, the Malware website will link you to... Malro, and there's a link to our Discord in there. And if you just want to chat with me, you can either do that in the comment section here on YouTube, or hit me up on my personal Discord in the middle there. And you can always throw me a message on Twitter if that is your preferred. But let's chat. What do you think? Is it worth the extra billion isk if you're doing this all the time? We made just in those two sites. Let's stack it. Now I'm assuming again we assume this all sells for what it does. I'm I mostly give this to my industrial guys. I keep these for me to use for whatever and I keep these to be used for people but for the salvage I pretty much just give it to my industrial guys I don't need it for income but we made 34 million in those two sites and that's without any really critical drops like this was okay actually this one's not even that good so yeah we didn't even get any of the really good drops so obviously it takes a lot of sites for it to pay for itself but that's life
All right, guys, I'm going to finish rambling. And I'm going to leave it there. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Again, let me know what you think. Anywhere you can find me. And we'll see you all next time. Take care, and I'm out of here.